Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Shepherd's Corner. And we have Shepherd's Corner with His Grace Charles Jason Gordon. Now, a couple of things, you know, I was doing some fact finding about this gentleman. You know, he was born in March, March the 17th. He was actually ordained on March the 19th. You know, and you know what March the 19th is? It's all about this, you know, this masculine man, this saintly masculine man, St. Joseph. And that's the journey that, we are taking, that he's taking us on. That's the conversation. Caribbean men look to St. Joseph. So let us see if this Caribbean man, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, you know, how did he, you know, being ordained on this beautiful, I mean, on this beautiful day, how did he match up? Good evening, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. Well, you know, fact checking is all right, you know. But you must get all your facts. <laughs> what are they? What did I Rev get? Reverend Deacon, you must get all your facts. Well, I have more. I have more. I no, no, no. You must okay. get all your facts, Reverend Deacon. What, what did I get? What? Uh -huh. You miss the fact that this March the 19th yeah. will be 30 years of my ordination. You miss that fact. Yeah. You miss the fact. Yeah, if you yeah. if you want to play facts with us, let me play good no man. <laughs> Any of viewers welcome. You know he and I have to do this thing. And you know, you, you know that's keep it tight, it's keep, it's keep it alive, it's keep it real. Great being with you again, Reverend. And uh, you know, Joseph is a very special um, saint for me. I have two patrons really. I was born on the 17th, which is St. Patrick, right. and, and he was a patron for the first part of my life and still as a patron but then I was ordained on the 19th of, of March and with that St. Joseph has silently creeped in to the DNA of my priesthood and has silently you know become the, the patron that has kind of pointed the way and pointed the light for me and has, has really been a, a guide, a beacon uh, a model of, of, of priestly life, of fatherhood, of fatherhood, of masculinity in this Caribbean region where we, where we live and move and have our being. And so, yes, you're right, but you, you, you give us half facts. Well, They're well, like half fruit. Never come with you They're like nearly facts. pregnant. Never given you less of the facts. I want you all to realize too that our blessed Lord started, you know, his public life when he was 30 years old. So we have Archbishop Charles this God on his 30th anniversary, you know, and, and the Holy Father on his 30th anniversary, you know, would, would tell the whole church, look to St. Joseph. So mm. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the connections here. You know, I'm like a, a yeah, woman yeah, yeah. with a crochet. You know, a crochet and everything. You're doing a dingo day. You're, you're, you're backing back on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're circling us. So, why St. Joseph? Truthfully, why St. Joseph? But I, I find that a, a crazy question after we've just said so much. Well, you know, the question is crazy, but it's a real question. You know? I, I, I met this this person on this man on saturday and he came right up to me he said listen to me let me tell you something let me tell you something this is a hard hard sell you you and and, and Pope francis china this is a real hard sell you know i said who are you what are you talking about he said no i'm telling you this is a very very hard sell all you're trying eh? and and i don't get it and and, and somebody had explained this to me i said what are you talking about sir he said, I am talking about St. Joseph. All you really want to, to sell St. Joseph to Caribbean man? That, that, that ain't possible. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that is a very, very hard sell. I'm not, you know, I'm, this there's as accurate a, a memory I have of how the conversation began. And it went for a while. Eh? It, yeah. it wasn't a short conversation. It went for a while. But it, it, it's as accurate as I could get it. The gentleman did not want to hear that St. Joseph could be a role model for Caribbean manhood. In fact, he say Pope Francis, and you know, he said, I could excuse Pope Francis, you know, he live in another world. But you, 
you live in here, you know what is it, what we are about. You know how this thing is be. And you really going to push Joseph on us and, and tell us that Joseph is the man that, 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 that we had to look to? No, 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 no. Something wrong. Well, I, I, get, I get, you know, push me in the direction, but I understand that if I will not say Joseph, you know, Trinidad Palan, you know, it means that say, somewhere along the line, you know, my wife was unfaithful in Trinidad. Mm. I get a horn. I have a tobacco. Mm. You know, how mm -hmm. you expect a Caribbean man to rule with that? Well, you know, the guy continued and said, no self-respecting Caribbean man would take a woman as his wife who got pregnant, but not for him. So don't, don't try that on me, you know. Listen, <laughs> you have no idea, you know. But I had fun, though. Yeah, I had fun. <laughs> Well, I had real fun because what was intriguing to me was that he had been reading with me and he'd been reading the last um, the last article where we talked about St. Joseph as a role model and and he he had a bit of objection he said no 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 that I walk in that no 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 if you have objection Obje no what objection after objection after objection I remember I only hope this didn't really happen to him, and that's why he couldn't handle it. I, I listen, listen, I'm not going there, I'm not going there. <laughs> All I know is that the guy made some profound statements yeah. of why he felt me and Pope Francis pushing the impossible. I say, but God is the business of the impossible, you know. Yes. Yeah. So that is all right, you know. But getting to the but, question, how could this be a role model? How could a man like St. Joseph be a role model for our Caribbean men? Well, he said, you know, you hear so little. He asked me, how could he be a role model? He asked me, tell me something. You hear so little about the man in the Bible. So there's not much you could go on anyhow. So why are you making the man such a big hoo-ha about a man that you have know so little about? He say, he say anything at all? That man ever say anything? Any? Anything at all he say? We are not recorded any man in the Bible, you know. <laughs> Nothing that he said was recorded, eh? Yeah. And then after I said, well, you know, by implication, there's a lot that we know. He said, yeah, well, a whole year? A whole year? Was another question. You had to tell me, he says, what you really see in this man. And tell me truthfully, you know, why St. Joseph? Tell me truthfully. So that's my question. Tell me truthfully, why St. Joseph? Really? But, but you had to be there uh -huh. to, hear, to hear the conversation. You know, I, I wish he was a fly in our wall or standing right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite something. Well, for Caribbean men, I could see them really looking at the man of St. Joseph and said, this just don't add up. It does not add up. To be the, what we call a man is to be macho. To be what we call a man is to, to have a certain amount of pride, you know, and, and, and that's, we, that's where we are, you know. We, we, are, we are proud Caribbean men and therefore Correct. look at somebody challenging our masculinity and the way we understand masculinity. Then St. Joseph Derry really, like, really doesn't cut it. Well, and, and here lies the problem. What we call masculinity is really not you know. And, and that's where St. Joseph really cuts it. Because what we call in manhood is, is how much children you could have. And don't support them. Eh? And, and don't, how irresponsible can you be? How, how much you could get away with, or how you could be married and still have a deputy essential, how you could, you know, these are the things that, that we are, that our popular culture considers, considers masculinity at its, at its height. And, and the problem that we're facing in the whole region, in our families, in our church, in society, the problem that we're facing is, is that these models of masculinity are, are really not models at all. They're really, they're really taking us in the wrong direction 
we brought up boys in a, in a misinformed understanding of what it is to be male and girls in a misinformed understanding of what it is to be female. And we've just, and because the fathers have been misinformed too, the children are misinformed. And so we now have an intergenerational challenge that is going back many, many generations. And, and that's where I believe St. Joseph is a recalibration of masculinity. Take that as your word for the day now. Word for the day, recalibration. I like it. I like it because, you know, our Caribbean man, in lots of cases, some in lots of cases, ends up in a relationship where he is not really the father of the son or the daughter in a relationship that he has, you know, yeah. and, and therefore life in Joseph is like way, you know what I mean? And, and that really mm -hmm. is a challenge too. Yep, yep. And, and, and there are many um, parallels. I mean, I know men who um, the woman got pregnant while they were going out and he knew it wasn't his and still married i i know i i know men like that so you know whereas i hear the machoism challenge i also know the reality that some men you know have have made hard choices for paternity and 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 stood up for for their for their fiance and, and for their children, for the child, even when they might not have been the child. And so that, that is, uh, that's also true. That's also part of the, of, of the reality that we have to deal with. Yeah, yeah. So the Caribbean manhood, Caribbean manhood is being challenged by St. Joseph. That's right. So, why is St. Joseph a real man? Why? I think St. Joseph, what we already know about St. Joseph tells us more than we need to know about why we could put St. Joseph forward as a real man, a man's man, and a model for man. Wow. That's a like that? That's a mouthful. Yeah. But remember what we're doing today? <laughs> we recalibrated masculinity. I like it. Word you, you know, recalibrate. You understand you you are the man for the sea. Yeah. So you understand the word recalibrating. All right. When when you um when we had a, a, a sailboat and we were heading up to Grenada, before we left to go, my father got a sea captain to come on board with us. Yeah. And we went into the into the Tucker Valley. And there are two points here lined up. And you line up your boat with these two points. And when you line up your boat with these two points, it's a, your compass supposed to be pointing north. Yeah. And the reason why you check is sometimes a compass gets recalibrated and no longer points to true north. All right. So you, you have to check your compass yeah. to make sure that your compass and true north are both aligned. Yeah. And, and so the act of recalibrating is the act of ensuring that your compass and true north are pointing in the same direction. So we want to make sure that, that mascul your notion of masculinity and real masculinity are pointing in the same direction, recalibrating masculinity. For all you non all you land lovers, you just got a lesson there. All right? So we have to a, nauti <laughs> a nautical lesson. <laughs> So St. Joseph is a real man. Why? Well, he accepts responsibility. Just start there. He accepts responsibility. Could we, could we, could we, we should do a drum roll on that one, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. You know, I keep, I keep telling guys, a boy only grows up when he absolutely has to, you know? Like Not a day before, you know? <laughs> not, not, a, not a moment, not a second, not, not an inch before that. He only grows up when he absolutely has to. And, and Joseph manned up and took responsibility. He's not the biological father, but he's a daddy. And, and you know, that's an important thing because a young fella said to me, you know, um, we have plenty of others around here. You know? 
Who we know that is. And the guy got it right. Uh, uh, a father is, is a, a biological father. In many cases, all it is is a sperm donor. Because after that, he's done nothing else for that child. But there's a difference. Joseph was a daddy. Then we, we could say he doesn't grab the headlines. So he's always in the shadows. He stays in the background. And yet he serves very humbly in the background. As we could see behind you yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. But I like what you wrote, um, which is a fact that, that, that comes out of scripture. He serves, but he is of the house of David. He is of nobility. So it says yes. that, hey, hold on a minute. He is of nobility, but yet he says nothing, but he serves. That is a big recalibration for us. And, and he's of a royal lineage, yes. a royal house. He had more right to the throne than Herod, who was called the king at that time. Joseph had every right to the throne in Israel. But yet Herod, who was not even a Jew, he was an Edomite, and not of the royal household, and had no claim to the throne, was put there by Rome as king. Whereas Joseph had a legitimate claim to the throne. And therefore, Jesus had a legitimate claim to this room. There's a lot. He acts and as yet, a he one. acts as a servant. Yeah, yeah, boy. And the, the Bible calls him an honorable man. An honorable man. In the context of the Bible, an honorable man, what does that say to us? Because that's, that's how it's stated in the Bible. He was an honorable man. Well, we, we have it stated several times, several different ways. They, they would say he's a righteous man, he's an honorable man. But in biblical language, it is really that he's a man of Torah, wow. a man of the law. And, and so the New International Version will say he's a man of the law. But if he's a man of Torah, and that would be the, the Hebrew equivalent behind the Greek, what that says, he's a man who is familiar with the word of God and who studied the word of God day and night. And who, who would have been steeped in God's word. He's a man of Torah. And that, that's, a, that's a big thing to speak to us in terms of the Caribbean man being a man of Holy Scripture. Torah. Yeah. Man of Torah, a man of, of Scripture. Yeah. A man of the Word of God. So if we're taking Joseph as a model, then part of that model is that he's a man of Torah. He's a man of the Word, the Word of God, that, that he, he makes the Word his home. And, and he makes a home for the word. And I want to run that in two directions. He makes a home for the word. Because remember in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the, the word pitched his tent and dwelt amongst us. So when we say that he was a man of, of Torah, a man of the word, we're saying that both that he made his home in the word of God, but he made his home a home for the word of God. And, and, and now we're talking both scripture yeah. and Jesus Christ himself. Wow. Well, both. It runs both ways. Eh? Caribbean man, we are speaking to you. Archbishop is speaking to you and we're putting out St. Joseph as the model, as the model man. And here we, we, we're talking about him being honorable. Here we are talking about him being a man of deep faith, a man of the Torah, right? And making, making a home for the word. And, 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 and he's giving us two, two, two definitions there of the word. You know, the word who became flesh, which is Jesus. And of course, the word, right? Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. Where do we line up so far? How, how, are we, how are we going so far? Men, men who are watching this, how are you all lining up? 
And remember, we are all working and journeying towards the 19th, the 19th of March. How are we lining up? Because, well, once you understand that Joseph is an honorable man, a man of Torah, then, you know, that's a man who's doing the right thing because it's the right thing regardless of external consequences. A man of Torah. It's beautiful, you know, St. Joseph raises the bar for manhood. In, he, he demonstrates really quite incredible qualities. The New Testament only has 19 verses about the man. 19 verses without him saying a single word in the 19 verses. Huh? And yet there's so much we actually know about him that, that comes from so little that was written. And that speaks volumes of the, of the, real, of the real character of this man and, and the integrity of this man and the importance of this man to the whole church. St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. So just from looking at the list of qualities, we know there is a significant value that St. Joseph brings to the Caribbean manhood. And I would say there's a lot we could learn, eh? and a lot we have to learn. If we, the men of this region, could be half the man that St. Joseph was, there would be a significant growth in family, in priesthood, and in all spheres of discipline in our region. And that's really where we have to see that there is a, there is a real challenge that we have in, in Caribbean manhood. And that until we can raise a bar for, for Caribbean men, we're not going to be able to find a way forward in building the civilization, the family or the church that we really want to build. I remember in, in our previous show, you talked about in Joseph being the savior of the savior. And I mean, that is stuck with me over the last couple of weeks. The savior of, of, of the savior. And, and that, uh, that, that too is a wonderful, you know, a wonderful thing that we can look at in terms of our own, you know, identity in terms of St. Joseph. Because we will never be the savior of the savior. Okay? Only Joseph has that title. Is he, is, he, is he one title no one has, not even Mary, shares with him? All right? Yes. So now you're raising you about a real, real high. Real, real high. But, but that title says that, you know, who he is. So St. Joseph is protector of the universal church. He's, he's, he's head of God's household. What about that one? Hmm. Head of God's household, you know? No, 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 no. I want to chew it. Take this one now. Head of God's household. What a choice. What a choice of a man. Head of God's mm -hmm. household. Yeah. Of God's household, you know. Because whose household is it really? Joseph's? No. It's, it's really God. God's household. It's God's household. And he's the head of God's household. That's, that's, you know, the more, the more I meditate on St. Joseph is the more excited I get at the, 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 the gems that emerge out of scripture and tradition. And none of these you could say, nah, really? I mean, the household of Nazareth, Mary, or Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, that household that was really God's household while he was on earth. Think about it. Think about it. I, I don't Who, whose household is it? And, and, and the model for understanding Joseph as head of God's household goes back to, the, to, his, to his typology in the Old Testament, which is the, the patriarch Joseph, who also went into Egypt. <laughs> To be able to save God's household and was also the head of God's household because he provided for his father, the patriarch, yeah. and all of his brothers 
who had to come begging in Egypt for salvation. And he too saved the household of God. And he too was the head of God's household. And he too was protector of the household of God. And so we pull, we pull the titles of Saint Joseph, father of Jesus, from Joseph, the man of many coats, the man of, of, of coats of many color. We, put, we, we, we because Old Testament typology says that the, the type in the Old Testament is always inferior to the type, to the, its realization in the New Testament. And, and, and if you use that model, like, like Moses is a type for Jesus. Right. Jesus is a new Moses. Right. But the new Moses is, is far superior than the type in the Old Testament. Yeah. Far superior. And, and it's the same thing with, we have to do with, G, with Joseph. Joseph, the, the, the man with the coat with many colors, was a, was, his typology was head of God's household. Savior of the household of God. All, all of these things, and, and you, you could know the story, you know it. But now you have to see how that is taken and carried up to a whole new level. In St. Joseph, this man of God, this, this man of Torah, this righteous man, this just man that, that God entrusted with his household. And his name was Joseph. To me, that is amazing because here we see Joseph in the Old Testament and we spring forward to Joseph, the savior of the savior, the head of God's household. And his name is Joseph. Mm -hmm. Not by accident. No. By design. By design. And, and it is in that design you start to now fill out the pieces that we, we really couldn't fill out before. Pressing forward, pressing forward. St. Joseph, a daddy to Jesus. And you said, if you had to leave, for whatever reason, suppose you were dying or something like that, I mean, who would you want, you know, to come into the life of your child? What, what kind of man would you like to come into the life of your child when you know you have to leave him behind? I, I like that. Well, I, that. You know, what what qualities would you choose? If if you what qualities would you want for that man? Well, you know, I started with you gotta be an honorable man. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know, we're going down the road. You have to be an honorable man. Yes. And the other say you gotta be a Catholic man. A Catholic man. You yes. gotta be living his faith. Living his faith. Knowing he his has faith. to have he has to have recalibrated his manhood. <laughs> <laughs> word of the day word of the day you know and um, he must have I would like to go back to a couple of weeks ago he must have saintly masculinity oh boy that, that's a beautiful phrase eh? yeah well you see when you recalibrate your, your manhood you get saintly masculinity so the, the this is the question that God asked them eh? When God was sending his son into the world, he asked the question, what man am I going to get to take care of my son? How, how, who, who is going to be father? Who is going to be earthly father to him? And God, he raised God's son from a baby to a man. From mm -hmm. a baby to a man. So he was there for a long time shaping and molding and being an example for Jesus. Correct. And that's why I would say from my perspective, we need to see St. Joseph as a model of manhood and the model of fatherhood because that's what he did and he did really well. He was given the responsibility to stand in the place of God, the Father, in raising God's son and in doing that, he, he had to exemplify the qualities of God himself, the fatherhood of God. And that, that, is, that is, to me, so precious 
in the meditation because when you consider what, what does Joseph bring to the table? 19 verses and no words. <laughs> what, what, what does he bring? Well, you know, you ever felt that God was a little bit silent? <laughs> <laughs> like this man, Joseph, like this man really resembling God in truth, you know. <laughs> like this man really resembling God in truth, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. something else but you know and this is why I believe he's a worthy candidate for patron of Caribbean men patron of the Caribbean man because he he gets us in, in, in so many ways eh? the drama he went through is a drama that so many Caribbean men go through and yet how he responded to that drama is so different from how we in the Caribbean respond. Better believe that. Our, our, response, our response is quite different um, apart from very few men. Our response is one of, you know, anger, somebody violent because we see it. We would react with something like this with violence, with anger you know, um, indignation, you know, and um, condemnation. All of these things mm -hmm. would be things that we yeah. would do, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Joseph was a daddy to Jesus. And, you know, let me call it again, you know. Yeah. Recalibrating manhood. Recalibrating manhood. We have to make sure that the compass of manhood points to the true north of manhood, not to the false directions that we in the Caribbean have seen manhood as. Manhood is not about being served, is not about being top dog, is not about shaming people, is not about power, is not about, about all these things. It's not, a, it's not about having more children than you could care for. It's not about these things. Manhood is, is really a precious gift. And if we recalibrate manhood and we move towards saintly masculinity, then I think it would be the best gift we could give to our families, our nation, our church, and to God himself. It would be the best of all gifts. Doing and the Caribbean is to move forward in any significant way at all. We need men who will take what I keep calling exaggerated responsibility for the common good. Remember we talked about that some time back, eh? Yeah, yeah. Because Lloyd Best would say that we are, we are unresponsible. That's not irresponsible, eh? Irresponsible is that you're, you're, you know what you're supposed to do, but you're just worthless. Unresponsible is that you really ain't sure what it is you're supposed to do. You're unable to be responsible. And, and if we're going to counteract being unresponsible, it means we have to go with exaggerated responsibility for the common good, for the good of us all. Like in, in, in these days of COVID, you, you can't go and do a Zessa party. You can't go and put people at risk. You can't do that. You have to be exaggerated in your responsibility until we find or recalibrate our ways of being responsible. I look, I look too at um, St. Joseph in this way too. And, and you know, I, I'm sad to say that, you know, men, if, if we pass by a rum shop right now in the height of COVID, 99% of the people gathered around with their mask down drinking are men. And I am quite sure women don't, don't organize Zessa parties. You hear where I'm going, eh? And, and the other 1% was just about to leave the bar. <laughs> <laughs> just about to leave the bar. I say, let me pull it up. That's the 1%. That's the 1%. No, but, but this is the reality. And, and therefore, the call, and I, I'm, I'm going with you on St. Joseph, if we recalibrate 
our manhood. If we recalibrate our manhood, I am sure we can conquer also this pandemic that we are seeing if men yes. set the bar. And men, you talk about exaggerated, ex exaggerated responsibility. Responsibility. Yes. Even the words choking in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody else to hear this. You understand? Anybody that's uh, close to me, they shouldn't hear this at all. No, 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 no. How, how we go look? You know? How we go look? <laughs> exaggerated responsibility. Now, this is St. Joseph's example. And I want to say it is the way that he will love us into manhood and into responsibility and into growing up. That's, that's, that's what his, his role as patron of Caribbean man is that Joseph will grow us into, into growing up. He will really grow us into growing up. And in that, in that growing us into growing up, we we will find a whole new a whole new level. So let me ask the question. I mean, you, you, you took us through a big big dialogue, but I'm gonna still say, why say Joseph? Why say Joseph? Nah, I go say it like this. Really, <laughs> really, Saint Joseph, which was a, another comment that I got. On that, on that um, conversation, eh? really, Saint Joseph, yeah, he he's a very, very hard sell. <laughs> well, from my perspective, one of the greatest qualities of Saint Joseph is that Saint Joseph is a man of God. He's a man of God, and and twice in the Bible, when the life of Jesus hung in the balance. Joseph was willing to be obedient to God. And I want to hear, I want people to hear this, you know, because this was, this is really a, a this is a tough sell. That Joseph was obedient to God. You know, that's a, a real tough sell, you know. Obedient to God. Because it was against his own thinking. When I say for against his own thinking, I mean, that's... <laughs> He had to bend his whole will, I guess, to God's will. Yeah. And that's where my, my constant prayer, you know, you know, if you hear me say it once, you never hear me say it at all. Bend my heart to your will, O God. That's what St. Joseph did. He was constantly willing to bend his heart to the will of God. Constantly willing. So you have to think that, that in the beginning, when he was told of the pregnancy and he wanted to divorce Mary informally, even that was bending his heart. Because the natural reaction was to divorce her publicly, renounce her for being pregnant for somebody else besides him. And, and you know, whatever it is, it is. That would be the natural human reaction. But he didn't do that. He was going to divorce her privately because a public divorce would have required them to stone, to stone Mary to death. Yeah. And, and he did not do that. And, and, and Mary, you know, would have put her whole trust in, in St. Joseph when she said yes to God, to the angel, because it all hung in, in the balance. All of it. I never thought of it that way too, you know. You know, that Mary put a trust not only in God, but in this man. This honorable this, man. This honorable man. She did. This man of Torah. Wow. This honorable man, this man of Torah, this man of, 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 of deep love for his wife, well, for his betrothed. And and when you when you think of it that way. You have to see how St. Joseph was a man of God. Because had Joseph done the opposite, you know, this whole thing would have gone really south, eh? But, you know, really, I'm, really south. Yeah, but you know, this, this says something. And sometimes you, you, you say this at weddings, you know, when we talk about women obey your husband, but we mm -hmm. don't talk about the other side. Here is Mary, I mean, here is Joseph, 
this this is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing I find. You know, with Mary trusting Joseph, and Joseph, mm -hmm. you know, bending his will to God. You will, you will love a man who bends his will to God. Mm -hmm. You would, and, and actually, that's exactly what Paul, Saint Paul says. Eh? The, the, the wives obey your husband is the simplest piece in the whole equation. Eh? And husbands, love your wife as Christ loved his church. And how did Christ love his church? He bent his will to the Father in going to the cross for her salvation. He suffered and was willing to suffer and die for her salvation. That, that's a higher bar than obedience. A much higher bar. And, and here we see the parallel for St. Joseph too. Yes. That is powerful. Because, and that's what I'm saying. That Joseph loved his wife the way Christ loved his church. By, by giving himself and bending his will to God's will. So that she would have life. And so that the baby would have life. And be protected. You heard it first on Trinity TV. You heard it first on conversations with Archbishop Jason. You heard it first here. So you can go and put this thing down today, right? You heard it first here. If you never thought about it before, you know, here His Grace says Joseph becomes integrally tied up with salvation history. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is Joseph's yes. We are accustomed to hearing about the Annunciation to Mary. Well, there's an Annunciation to St. Joseph also. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. That's an Annunciation, you know. That's the angel announcing to, to Joseph what God desires. Do not be afraid. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Joseph had a choice. He had a choice, you know. And if Joseph had said no, you see me? I, as a man, and I ain't taking that. If Joseph had made that choice, the salvation history would be written very differently right now. And, and, and what a way, you know, to, to this exaggerated responsibility, this saintly masculinity for all our men, you know, mm -hmm. even men trying to live saintly lives, trying, trying to live what I would call chaste lives before they get mm -hmm. married. This is a call for that. Yes. And, and that's why I believe this is such a beautiful opportunity that Pope Francis has given to us to recalibrate Caribbean masculinity. Recalibrate it. Now, Mary was born without original sinner, but Joseph, like us, was born with original sinner. Okay? All right? As far as we know. As far as we know. And that, that's wow. As far as we know, he was born with original sin, which means like you and like me, he too would have had his plan for his life. He too would have had his plan of perfection and what he wanted. He too would have had his dreams and aspirations of where his life should, should go. And yet, when God asked him to abandon his plans, and to take Mary to his home, he bends his heart to the will of God. That is manhood. That is man. That is man <laughs> and, and that gives us hope, men who were born with original sin, to see in a man, it is possible. It is to possible. bend, to bend to God's will, to bend to God's will. And, and, it is, and it is in that that he's expressing the deepest truth of manhood, that, that manhood 
never is generative inside of himself. A man is only generative outside of himself. And he's, he's most generative when he's willing to bend outside of himself to what God is asking him. When he's bending to what he wants, he's actually not a man, not an adult. He's, he's a boy. When he's bending to his will, to his desires, to, to what he wants for himself, for pleasure, for power, for money, for, for, for all the, the, the glory. When he's bending that way, he's actually being a little boy. Manhood is actually reaching up and putting your life at the disposal of God and his kingdom. That is exaggerated responsibility for the common good. Wow. That is recalibration of manhood. That is, that is where Joseph takes us and that's where Joseph is a, a model for manhood in the Caribbean today. This, this has so many dimensions for us to ponder on, I believe. And I'm glad that, I just want to remind people, we started on the 15th and Archbishop Jay has been, has been taking us on this journey. So remember the 15th is coming up when we're going to be doing this 33 days all the way down, this novena. This journey to simply masculinity. And, and, and I find that you've given us so much to ponder on over the last couple of minutes and over the last couple of shows. I'm excited to see what's going to happen between now and the 19th. But we'll leave that for another time. Hold on, hold on to, to your socks. <laughs> hold on to your socks. Somebody, you some, somebody told me, they say, Derek, when you're on with Archbishop Jay, do you have your safety belt on? <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, you know, Sunday, somebody WhatsApp and tell me, my safety belt, boss. <laughs> Too much pressure. Too much pressure. <laughs> the airbag come out. <laughs> <laughs> the term honorable, as we've seen, is, is really about, about again, He's a man of God. And St. Joseph, the role model. What are the characteristics that we see in Caribbean manhood today? What are the one characteristics you see? In the Caribbean man, boy. I would say, well, I go right back to the bar. I go right back to the bar because I'm driving through the western part of Trinidad and Tobago. And I see men not being responsible men. And that's, a, that's, that's a big thing for me because I feel that we are the ones that our women are looking towards for leadership and we're not providing it. Yeah. You know? And, and the thing is, both men and women lead in different ways, All right. but, but in, in a mutuality. And, and when only the woman has to take the responsibility we 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 saying we sending a signal to the boys in the house, you know. That is what a man is. He could be irresponsible, and it's all right, the woman could take this lap. Wow. So we 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 sending the next generation a, a message, and and that's why for me Saint Joseph is a role model. The level of irresponsibility we have to we have to really look at it. You know, not great at managing our emotions. We men, we're really not great at it. Now, if Joseph was not great at managing his emotions, you know, this whole drama could have looked real different. Eh? What do you mean? Re Listen, real different, you know, if he wasn't great at managing his emotions. Many have been spoiled by mom and are accustomed to getting exactly what they want. And when they don't get what they want, then is a whole drama in the whole family. So that's the exaggeration of the, of the uncalibrated masculinity. But I would say I'm seeing men emerging who have taken responsibility in their families, who have stepped up to the plate, who have been there I have seen men who have chosen to be a daddy when they never had a daddy themselves. And they make it up by the seat of their pants on the fly. 
because they have nothing to go with of how this thing's supposed to work. I've seen that too. And I've, I've seen men who have, have been willing to, to be a father and a daddy to other, to other somebody else's child. I've seen that too. I've, I've seen the man, you know, at the home, hands on with the kids. I've seen that too. So I, I, I'm saying that we're in a flux right now, but but in this flux, let's look to Saint Joseph. Let's look to Saint Joseph, because we'll find a real model of manhood, a real model of Caribbean manhood. What about violence? So many men we've read in in the newspapers recently. So many men are violent towards women and children. So many men are violent. Of course, Joseph was disappointed. And that is, that is using as mild a language as I could put. <laughs> I suppose I have to respect the man because he's a saint. But when the scripture says, and he chose to divorce Mary informally, it wasn't in that tone that that happened. Eh? <laughs> that was, I'm sure. That was, that, that was the tone of that conversation. You know, if, if he was not a man of, of deep intelligence, emotionally, you know, that scene could have, could have transpired very differently. And, and it, what we would have now is something very, very different. But he chose not to stone her. And he chose to do the nonviolent option. He chose the nonviolent option. He chose to spare her publicity. We need to raise the bound masculinity in the Caribbean. We just need to raise it. And for this to happen, men, we have to have something to point our way towards. And that exemplifies saintly masculinity. And for me, that is St. Joseph. For me. I, I go in with Joe. Recalibrate, fellas. Recalibrate. Recalibrate from my perspective, there's no better model or guide than St. Joseph. You know why? There's yeah, simply, you know, that's God's choice. And I can't choose better than God, eh? I can't choose better than God. And for me, that's enough. The, the argument is out. Once I understand that is the choice God made, there's no more argument. Remember in, in geometry, you used to say QED? <laughs> well, QED. <laughs> and through you know in your homily on on sunday you you challenge us to understand our identity and here we have our identity through our baptism mm -hmm. that tells us who we are this, yes you, you, this is important for all of us to yeah. understand this mm -hmm. like saint joseph born with original sin through our baptisms, cleanse our original sins. So we are starting from a point where our identity is mm -hmm. one, you know, of adopted sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. And the call for all of us is to be simply masculinity, to be honorable. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the key messages, I just want to do a little advert. <laughs> a little, little advertisement. Nice people, food for the journey, food for the journey by the man who was ordained on the 19th of March, 30 years ago, by the most reverend Dr. Charles Jason Gordon. If only didn't get it, only so, it. So, this is this is um a first look, you know, these days they talk about the reveal, yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you're having a child and they have a little party to reveal whether it's boy or girl, well, this is the reveal. So these, this is a, co a collection of homilies. It's called Food for Our Journey, Homily, Homilies Volume 1, The Desert Experience. So these are all the homilies in COVID from the 15th of March when we closed until um, Easter Saturday night where we moved from the desert. And we, we pulled all these homilies together, a whole team of people, pulled them together, formed them, put them into book form, got them edited, got them published. And, and this, this um, will be on sale on a venue near you. 
<laughs> we, we're going to have it in the Turgical Commission, Living Water, our daily bread bookshop in the cathedral. We'll have it in, um, in San Fernando, Parks Abbey Bookshop, the Sanctuary. And uh, you could also call into the call into the Chancery and make a, a pre-order um, because it will be out in about a week. Well, it'll be out in time for Ash Wednesday. So don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. This is, don't miss it. This is, this is the book you've been waiting for because this would be a great companion through, through Lent. Because day by day, now you could read the homily that we had in COVID lockdown last year and see what happening this year. And you could have this wonderful comparison day by day during the Lenten period. And remember when it's coming out, that's a lot. Just about the time when you don't eat now. You understand? You have yep. to be three days. So get this something to journey with during life. Yep, 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 yep. So with that, what's the key message? St. Joseph, the real man, presents us Caribbean men with a model, a guide, and a pathway to sanctity. That's the real man, St. Joseph. The action step, on the 15th of February, we'll begin the 33-day challenge, leading to a consecration to St. Joseph. And this is an excellent opportunity to meditate on the attributes of, of this extraordinary man who God chose to be the father of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the, the 15th, you'll get more information on that, but look out for it. I want, the, let's do the 33-day challenge. Let's do it. And this is not exclusive to men. This is for everybody, men and women. Let's do the 33-day challenge. Let's, let's register for it. And, and let's really get ourselves there. And, and what's our, our scripture? Well, predictable. Matthew 2, 13 to, to 15. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Father, we thank you that we live in this time, the time of St. Joseph. And we pray, oh God, that in this year of extraordinary grace, with St. Joseph as patron and guide, that our men may find the pathway to masculinity, to saintly masculinity, to seeing ourselves as men of God and seeing ourselves in a, in a model of manhood that is life-giving for other people. Father, we thank you. And we ask your blessings upon us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Archbishop J. Everybody, don't forget the times that we're on. You can get us on Facebook, on social media. We're on live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock. We're back on again on Sunday morning. We're on the different radio stations, 99.5. Look for us and share this with your husbands, your wives, with your sons and daughters. Amen. God bless. God bless.